Yeah. Good evening, everyone. We have everybody up close enough. Are you excited? Let me ask this question. Are there any NAN fans in the house? Good evening, everyone. I'm Montgomery County Auditor Carl Keith, and I'm so glad to uh, welcome you here this evening for an exciting night, a historic night, because tonight, a young woman who a long, long time ago came to Dayton, Ohio to attend the University of Dayton and study chemistry, of all things, but got on the RTA bus and rode it down to uh, Democratic headquarters and got involved in local politics, and that lady tonight has made history in Ohio. But not only Nan, not only Nan, she's also her running mate, Cheryl Stevens. Cheryl Stevens has made history in Ohio tonight. You know, and Cheryl's been here for a while this evening, and you know, there's been this constant smile and laugh on her face all night. I'm so excited for this team. I know you all are so excited for this team. So please join me and welcome the next Lieutenant Governor of the State of Ohio, Cheryl Stevens. If you can't tell, I'm a little excited tonight. I want to thank a few people. First of all, my father, Cato Stevens, retired U.S. Air Force. Right, Pat brought us here. My little brother, who continues to believe in me like he was still a little kid at an age that I won't mention publicly. <laughs> Former representative, sta uh, State Representative Barbara Boyd, who first encouraged me to run for office, and three groups in Cleveland who always had my back. The Black Women's Political Action Committee, the Cuyahoga Democratic Women's Caucus, and the Cleveland Stonewall Democrats. Is that a mix for you? A group of white women, a group of black women, and all the gay folks? Nobody can beat us. We are America. America is diverse. It's full of people who are different and who are similar. For those of you who don't know me, I serve on Cuyahoga County's council. That is a county commissioner in the other 88 counties of the state, uh, 87 counties of the state. I run a nonprofit that builds affordable housing for people. And I have served as a city council person and as a mayor. Who else has served as a mayor? <laughs> but we'll get to her in a minute. I'm so Im impressed with the response of the Democrats of Ohio. They believe in Nan and I, overwhelmingly so. <sighs> This is America, and this is a wonderful country. You can believe in a dream, and that dream can come true. Yeah. Yeah. Nan and I have two hardworking fathers and two incredible mothers. Yeah. I lost my mother to breast cancer, but Nan's mom is still here. Together, these four people believed in the American dream. They worked hard. They wanted their kids to do better than they did. Now, this may not be the dream that Nan's father had for her, or the dream that my father had for me, but what a dream it is. Yeah. So I, as I was telling you, my dad's retired U.S. Air Force. We got here to write, Pat. I went to a different school almost every year growing up. But I was lucky enough to have good teachers, good parents, and a commitment to learning. I firmly believe in that American dream. My parents worked hard played by the rules, served our country, and they were able to give me the opportunity to dream big and be capable of doing all sorts of things. Ohio is a significant piece of America. We're all hardworking here. We're all committed to having better lives for each generation. I've spent my career, like my buddy, Nan Whaley, working on giving Ohioans a better life, a better quality of life. Community and economic development were, are my heart and soul, but I'm learning so much more about what we need to do to make Ohio a better place. I was excited to join this ticket in January. 
I'm committed to fighting for the people of Ohio, not for a few wealthy folks. Regardless of whether you live with me in Cleveland Heights or you're down here in Dayton, Nan and I are committed to the great quality of life we know we can help you achieve. It's clear to me, and it's clear to most Ohioans, that we're not headed in that direction under the current leadership. It's time for bold new ideas and fresh leadership in Ohio, and Nan Whaley and Cheryl Stevens can provide that for you. Tonight, Ohioans decided Nan and I are the people to lead you there. We want to get things done. We want to be innovative and resilient. We are willing to work with anyone. There's a joke that mayors tell. There are Democrats, there are Republicans, there are independents, and then there are mayors. It's our job to get your trash picked up, the dog from the next door neighbor's house to shut up, make sure there are jobs in our communities, and we're supposed to do whatever it takes, as long as it's legal, to do it for our communities. So everybody needs someone like a mayor, and why not two mayors? So you've seen Nan in action, and people in Northern Ohio have seen me in action. We're a team that won't quit for Ohio. Together we will fight for your pay to go up, your bills to go down, and together your state government to work harder than ever for you. We'll flip Ohio and turn around our state so that it serves you. Now, I'm very, very proud and excited to introduce my friend and the next governor of the state of Ohio, Nan Whaley. There is nowhere I'd rather be than here with all of you to celebrate tonight. I am so proud to say that Cheryl Stevens and I will be your Democratic nominees for Ohio Governor and Lieutenant Governor. May y'all, a woman has never been nominated for governor in the state of Ohio and you all just changed that. This is a historic moment for the Democratic Party and for all of Ohio. And I want every little girl listening or watching to know that this is possible. Now I have to start with a few thank yous. Thank you to my husband, Sam, for being there with me no matter what.
Thank you to my parents. Growing up, my dad worked at the GM plant, and my mom worked at the laundromat when he got laid off. The values of hard work and resolve that they instilled in me is why I am here today. Thank you to my entire campaign team who got us here, especially my campaign manager, John Hagner. And you all, thank you to the best senator in the country, Sherrod Brown, and all of our other supporters and endorsers. And of course, thank you to Cheryl Stevens, my amazing running mate. Cheryl has spent her whole career fighting for good neighborhoods and affordable housing, and I know she'll make an amazing lieutenant governor. Finally, thank you to my friend John Cranley. This has been a hard-fought campaign, but I genuinely appreciate his ideas and plans and look forward to working with him over the next six months. All right. It is hard to believe, but we launched this campaign more than a year ago, and what a year it has been. This is a campaign about Ohio families and communities, and that means meeting people where they are. It means lifting up every community, not tearing anyone down. Because if there's one thing you need to know about me, it's that I believe in Ohio. I believe in what this state is capable of. People have always come here looking for opportunity and a better life. Pioneers moving west. African Americans escaping slavery or the Jim Crow South. Migrants from Appalachia. Immigrants from all over the world. And yes, kids like me from a small town in Indiana who grew up thinking Ohio was the big time. <laughs> Folks moved here because Ohio was building the future a state of innovation and creativity, of inventors and astronauts. But today, a small group of politicians and corporate lobbyists are standing in the way. They're more interested in holding on to power than making sure the future is built in Ohio again. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a change. Now, over the next six months, you're going to hear from a lot of folks in the media and talking heads from the coast saying this can't be done. They're going to say that Ohio is a red state and that Mike DeWine can't be beat. But starting tonight, we're going to prove them wrong. <laughs> Ohio isn't a red state or a blue state. It's a frustrated state that has been ignored by politicians from both parties for far too long. I'm running for governor because I know that Ohio is ready for a change. The fact of the matter is, is that Mike DeWine is out of touch, corrupt, and doesn't care about you. Now, I'll tell you my age. I was born in January 1976. In November of 1976, Mike DeWine was elected to office for the first time. I am 46 years old, and Mike DeWine has been in office for basically my entire life. Now, I'm not saying that to be funny. I think the last 46 years have been pretty devastating for our state. In 1976, we were still a global leader in cutting-edge technology. Our schools and colleges were among the best in the country. Our communities were growing. In the 46 years of Mike DeWine, our jobs were shipped overseas or out of state, our communities emptied out, our kids and grandkids started leaving Ohio if they wanted a new job. And how has Mike DeWine done? Well, he's gotten so rich during his 46 years in office that his personal mansion has its own Wikipedia page. So rich that he bought a minor league baseball team in North Carolina. So rich that he can give his campaign millions of dollars without batting an eye. Think about how different that is from middle class families in Ohio. Families like mine. Families worried about paying their bills. Or if their kids are going to find a decent job close to home. And now Mike DeWine wants four more years. No. No. 
But look, it's not just that he's out of touch, he's corrupt. The consistent theme throughout these 46 years is that Mike DeWine's buddies got more powerful and richer on our dime. Our, go our jobs go overseas, they get another beach house in Florida. It was true when he was in Congress, it was true when he was Attorney General, and it's certainly true now that he's governor. First Energy, a company so rich its name is on the Brown Stadium, spent millions of dollars to get Mike DeWine elected governor. In return, he gave them everything they wanted. He ignored warnings from his own friends and appointed First Energy's lobbyist to be top utility, Ohio's top utility regulator. A lobbyist First Energy admits they bribed for $4 million. He happily gave them a billion dollar bailout for their failing energy plants paid for by extra fees on all of our electric bills every single month. Yeah. We're literally paying a corruption tax each and every month because of Mike DeWine. I mean, I guess what's a little pay to play between friends, right? It's the largest scandal in Ohio history, and it's why the FBI has called the Ohio State House the most corrupt in the country. And y'all, that takes some work. <laughs> And what has DeWine done about this? Not a damn thing. In fact, he keeps defending all these folks while you and I pay extra on our electric bill every month to bail a coal plant out in Indiana. You are literally still footing the bill for this, for this corruption. Now, why'd they do it? Because they thought they could get away with it. They think you and I don't care. But starting tonight, we're gonna show them that we do. Now, over the next few months, Mike DeWine is going to tell you that he's worried about struggling middle-class families and that he's delivered for them. The truth is, he hasn't. Not in the last four years and not in the last 46. While I was growing up, my family was personally impacted by bad trade deals that hurt American workers, just like so many families across Ohio. DeWine claims to care about Ohio jobs, but folks, he's never met a trade deal he didn't like. Time and time again, he voted to send our jobs overseas. Hundreds of thousands of manufacturing jobs have left since he voted to give China favored nation status, and hundreds of thousands more since he voted for CAFTA. He loves to go to ribbon cuttings and shiny new development deals, but he is nowhere to be found when they fall through. You know what you won't hear from Mike DeWine over the next few months? Big projects like Lordstown Motors in Trumbull County or Peloton outside of Toledo that makes big promises of new jobs but don't deliver after Mike DeWine has already taken his victory lap. He was the first in line when there was a photo op, but when those communities needed leadership, he was long gone. He'll tell us about how he cares about safety, but we know that's not true. He stood here in our community after nine of our neighbors were murdered in the Oregon district and promised to do something to address gun violence. Oh, and he did something. He made things worse. Nine dead in Dayton wasn't worth the political risk for Mike DeWine. Instead, he made all of our Ohio communities less safe with laws like stand your ground and declared open season on law enforcement with permitless concealed carry that will lead to more deaths in Ohio. He'll tell us he cuts taxes, but that's only really true if you're rich like him. For years, Mike DeWine and the other folks running our state have been cutting taxes for the rich, hoping it'll trickle down to the rest of us. Now, you all know it hasn't. Instead, local governments have had to increase property taxes to pay for basic services like our schools. Mike DeWine and his buddies get a tax cut while you're paying more on your property taxes, your utility bills, and for all kinds of basic needs. And guess what he's doing to help struggling families? Not a damn thing. And let's be very clear. If we reelect Mike DeWine, abortion will be criminalized in Ohio, no question. Last night, we learned that Roe v. Wade will be overturned. And it's no secret that he spent his entire career attacking women's rep reproductive rights. He's been waiting for this moment for 46 years. Folks, this is not a drill. 
There are already bills moving from the extremists in the legislature that will ban all abortion. No exceptions whatsoever. That's our future if we give Mike DeWine another four years. Let me say it again. Mike DeWine is out of touch, corrupt, and he doesn't care about you. Here's the truth. Ohio's on the top of bad lists and on the bottom of the good ones. We're number one in corruption, but one of the worst states for job growth. We used to export cars, now we export our college graduates. The average Ohioan used to make more than the average American, now they make less. Everything I've just said is a long way of answering a basic question. Are you and your family better off now than you were four years ago? Is Ohio better off now than it was 46 years ago? If the answer is yes, hey, I'm not your candidate, plain and simple. But for the rest of you, here's what I think. Ohio deserves better. A second term as governor isn't a lifetime achievement award like some sort of gold watch you get for clocking 50 years on the taxpayer's dime. This election is about our future, and there is just too much at stake to give Mike DeWine another four years. Now, you all know I've traveled to every county in Ohio, all 88 of them. And what I've learned is that most folks, no matter where they live, want basically the same thing. They want to be able to afford to raise their family and leave their kids better off than they are. They want a good home and a safe community. They want fairness and to be treated with respect by their elected officials. Now, I don't think that's too much to ask. And I know we can get there if we come together and demand better. Now, my message is pretty simple. I want your pay to go up, your bills to go down, and your government to work for you. So what does that mean? It means making sure that one good job is enough no matter where you live in Ohio. I grew up middle class and watched my parents sometimes struggle to make ends meet. That's made me believe in my bones that when we talk about the economy, we have to talk about people, not numbers and statistics. That's why Ohio families are, the, are at the heart of my plan to create good paying jobs all across Ohio. As governor, I'll create a new camp compact with Ohio businesses, only giving incentives to companies that pay a fair wage and treat their workers with respect. We'll be focused on results, not ribbon cuttings. Our administration will support entrepreneurs and small businesses, and we'll double down on the jobs of the future, ensuring that cutting edge clean energy technology is built right here in Ohio. We'll raise, we'll raise wages for all Ohioans, including raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. But we've also got to lower your bills. The first place we can do that is by removing the corruption tax you pay on your electric bill every month to bail out a coal plant in Indiana, thanks to Mike DeWine. We'll expand high-quality preschool programs like we did right here in Dayton so you aren't spending an arm and a leg on child care. And I'll pass legislation to find drug companies that unfairly jack up prices and cap monthly insulin costs at $30. Because no one should have to choose between keeping food on the table and affording their medicine. For th For this to happen, though, our government has to actually be working for you. Scandal after scandal has made it clear the politicians in charge of Ohio are looking out for themselves, not us. That's why the very first policy I introduced was my ethics plan. Our administration will restore public trust by creating a new public accountability commission to investigate corruption and make sure that politicians aren't investigating themselves. Now, this all seems pretty doable to me. We're gonna raise your pay, lower your bills, and make government work for you. That's how we give folks real opportunity to thrive. 
But this is only possible if we come together and say we will not accept the status quo. We have the power this November to say enough is enough because Ohio deserves better. Ohio should be a state that we can all be proud of. A state that people from across the country and around the world want to move to, just like I did. A state where you have a real shot at opportunity. That's why I'm running for governor, because I know what this state, Ohio, is capable of. And let me be clear, no matter who you voted for in the past, if you're sick of the same old, same old, this campaign is for you. Now, I want to say something to the Republicans tonight who are fed up with Meg, Mike DeWine and place their hopes for a better Ohio and Jim Renacci and Joe Blystone. We might not agree on everything, but we can all agree we need to unite, not as Democrats or Republicans, but as Ohioans to send the corrupt establishment a message they can't ignore. Because folks, here's the simple truth. Whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, or independent, if you aren't a lobbyist or a big money donor, Mike DeWine doesn't care about you, but I do. So join our movement and we'll end the corruption and cronyism together. We can take our state back. Yes. All right, folks, Ohio is at a crossroads. For years, we've had the same old leadership with the same old results. Folks are working harder, but falling further behind. Your pay stays the same, but your bills are going up. Your kids and grandkids are either struggling to get ahead or they're moving somewhere else. All the while, Mike DeWine and his buddy hold on to power and line their pockets. But it doesn't have to be this way. You deserve a government and a governor who works for you, not themselves. Yeah. It's time for something different. It's time for a governor from the middle class, not another millionaire. A governor who's looking forward, not back. We know what's possible when we work together, when we're resilient and innovative. That's the Ohio I want to live in. Now, let's get to work.